Hey guys, welcome back to yet another video. In today's video, I am going to reviewing the next Scooby-Doo film in the line of reviewing every single Scooby-Doo film, and that is Aloha Scooby-Doo. So getting right into it, I love Aloha Scooby-Doo. It is one of my favorite Scooby-Doo films to date. It was one that I fondly remembered. Like, I loved this film as a child, just like a lot of these Scooby-Doo films, obviously, but this one more than others was one of my favorites. And upon rewatch, that opinion stuck. I really enjoyed this film. First of all, I really like the Hawaiian setting. This time period of Scooby-Doo, I didn't even realize it like as I was watching it, but looking back now and like looking at the Scooby-Doo releases during this time period, they explore a lot of different cultures. Like there was the Monster of Mexico, which was obviously Mexico. There was Music of the Vampire, which was arguably Australian culture. It was kind of just like an ad for Australia, but like there was some culture in there. And then there's this one obviously with Hawaii. There's Loch Ness Monster with Scotland. And then after this, there is Chill at Scooby-Doo, which could arguably be Antarctica or whatever. And there's also Where's My Mommy, so Egypt. And so that's kind of interesting because it makes these films more culturally relevant, if you want to call it like that. Like, obviously they don't do deep dives into it and have major themes surrounding ideas from that culture. Like I said, Monster Mexico doesn't handle Day of the Dead very well. Something like Coco does that a lot better. And obviously you can find a lot better representations of each of these cultures in other films, but I think that this film did a pretty good job of showing us what Hawaiian culture is like. There was obviously surfing, and there's obviously this like community island vibe with all of the natives to the island, and then there is like macadamia nuts, and there's like uh, that whole party scene with the uh, necklaces, I don't know what they're called, I apologize, as well as there's like fire breathers, and all that stuff. It's just it really brought the Hawaii setting to life and I thought it was a really good place to do this film. And on top of that, I think that the Wiki Tiki was a really good monster. He was scary, but like he's not like a giant opposing threat like the El Chupacabra was and like the Loch Ness Monster was. He's like more human, but also like the spirit type thing. I thought he was really creepy. Not, sorry, I didn't think he was creepy, but I thought he was a good monster for the gang to face. As well, the like little Wiki Tiki minions, I thought those were terrifying as a kid. They're a little cheesier now, and I had the same problem that I had with the Loch Ness Monster actually, where sometimes when you see a lot of the little Wiki Tikis, they look a little off their animation style. Again, I don't know why, but they just kind of did, but I really liked them as well. And obviously the explanation for them and for the Wiki Tiki in general aren't the best because like the whole volcano thing, that makes sense. Him being the Wiki Tiki makes sense, but then like how is he breathing fireballs and how is she controlling like a million of these little guys at once with one controller? Like that's something actually I watched this film with my mom and she had that problem. I like noticed it obviously, but like I said before, I don't care how they do it. I care how the gang solves the film. I care how the gang comes together, pieces clues together, and solves the mystery. I don't care about the actual explanation for the monster, so that's something I didn't have an issue with. It's just something I thought I'd mention because when I was watching with my mom, she had an issue with it, and I just thought that was kind of interesting. And something else that I actually thought was really interesting was that, like most Scooby-Doo feature-length films, I think the runtime is, I'll just check the DVD here, it is 74 minutes. I have no clue if that's in focus for you guys. Uh, I probably just completely screwed up the focus there, so I apologize for that. But yeah, it's 74 minutes long, you'll just have to trust me if you didn't see that. And that's a typical length for a Scooby-Doo film, and that is really short for a movie. Like, even 90 minutes is short, like I heard Venom's gonna be 90 minutes coming up, and that that's just extremely short. But this film didn't feel short. Like, there was a good plot, a lot happened, but it didn't move so fast. Like, it felt like they gave decent time. Like, they would go and solve the mystery and stuff, and then they'd head back to their hotel and do like a little talking with the mayor or go to that party, and then something else would happen. And like, 
I thought it was very well paced. It didn't feel like a 74 minute movie. It felt like an hour and 40 or so. So props to this film for having really good pacing and getting a lot in there while not having a very long runtime. And aside from that, I don't really have anything else to say. Like, I really enjoyed this film. It's, uh, I guess I'll just get into the ratings right here. I'm gonna give this film a 9.5 out of 10. I really enjoy this film. I love this film. It is still one of the best Scooby-Doo films on rewatch. It's just not as good as like the golden age of Scooby-Doo with Cyber Chase and with Witch's Ghost and with Alien Invaders and with Zombie Island. It's not that caliber of film but it's still a really good Scooby-Doo film that I really enjoyed. Again, we're still on the cusp, well, we're actually past the cusp of the best Scooby-Doo films, but this time period, it's still early 2000s, they're still doing a really jo good job with these films, and I really enjoyed it. But anyways, that's all I have to say about the film. Before I end this review, I just wanted to let you guys know, I know the Scooby-Doo reviews have been not once a week, like I promised, and it's probably gonna stay that way, actually, because I found myself lately, I'm just not as inspired to make these Scooby-Doo reviews right now. Like, I was in a real Scooby-Doo um, binging, like, I was really into Scooby-Doo for a while there, and obviously I still love Scooby-Doo, it's just not something I want to watch right now. If you know, like, I go through phases of movies, like, last October I went through a horror movie phase, I hated horror movies before that, I don't watch any right now. And then I went through an Italian neorealism and just neorealism as a whole phase. Like, I go through phases of movies. I was in a Scooby-Doo phase. I'm not in that Scooby-Doo phase anymore. I'll still occasionally review one of these Scooby-Doo films. Maybe I can promise at least once a month. But as of right now, it's not really my priority right now. I want to watch some other stuff. And so yeah, these aren't going to be happening weekly anymore. I apologize if you guys did like that. If a lot of you guys do want me to bring them back, I'll try and do it like every second week but it's just not a priority right now to watch a Scooby-Doo film every week and review a Scooby-Doo film every week, so yeah. I apologize for that, but that is all I have to say for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like down below, subscribe if you're new around here. If you want more updates on anything to do with my channel, make sure to follow me on Instagram at ntd underscore films. Thank you guys all for watching, and have a good day.